You know who makes the best money in real estate? It's always the middlemen. It's the brokers. It's the landlords. It's the money. It's the lenders. Hard money. Those are the guys that seem to make the easy money in real estate. And have you ever wondered how you can get in on some of that action? Oh, that's easy. Some of you guys may have already heard of this platform, Ground Floor. It's been around for a while now. They've been lending for, I think, about 10 years now, and they've grown up quite a bit. I really like Ground Floor. I think this is a really nice opportunity. Basically, what it is is Ground Floor offers you, the investor, the opportunity to be the hard money lender for fix and flip guys or sometimes just remodelers or refinances, that sort of thing. What I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Ground Floor, and then I'm going to show you the marketplace, and then I'm going to show you how, as a broker, I would invest in these properties, the things that I would look for or look out for if I was investing in hard money. It helps to know a little bit about real estate because you kind of want to judge the properties and the borrower, but you can't know much about the borrower, but you can know a little bit about the properties. But really, it's about the numbers. That's what's cool about real estate. It's not the pictures, so to speak. The money's in the numbers. So a couple things about Ground Floor. They do have a mobile app, but you can't do everything on it, so pretty much stick to the desktop. They file your taxes for you when you make a profit, and they do that with a 1099 INT. Anyone can invest with Ground Floor. That's what's great. Accredited and non-accredited investors, 18 and over, in and out of the U.S. So that's great. Basically, it's open to all of us. It's not blockchain related. You can't buy it in, with crypto. So what you have to do is you have to link your bank account and then you have to you know, upload some money from your bank account into, your, into the platform. And that's how you can buy into some of these properties. Now, it's also not a REIT. In a REIT, you're investing money into a fund that then distributes out or invests it in multiple different properties. That's not what Ground Floor is doing. It's not a REIT at all. You get to choose the properties that you want to invest in. Ground Floor has been through the SEC process, so you, I don't think there's the same SEC risk with this that you do with some of the other newer platforms that are coming out with tokenized real estate. I think um, Ground Floor is really safe in that department. They've already gone through the process of the SEC registration for what they're doing, and they're all good. Now, one of the risks is, of course, a borrower, you lend money into a project, he's remodeling the house, and then he doesn't sell the house, and he's not repaying the loan. So what's the risk? Do you lose your money? No. Um, what happens then, and same as any lending situation, ground floor is going to, hopefully their loan that they're loaning is going to be in first position. Uh, maybe it's in second, but I think they're almost always in at least first position. Um, what would happen is then the property would need to be sold, and then that money would go to pay off the lien holders, which are in first and second positions. So that's the process. Now, the tricky thing here is, is foreclosures can take a long time. So one of the techniques on um, ground floor I think you need to be paying attention to when you're looking at properties are um, judicial foreclosure states and non-judicial foreclosure states. In judicial foreclosure states, it takes a lot longer to foreclose on properties to get it back from the buyer so they can sell it and get the money distributed. Um, in non-judicial foreclosure states, the process is a lot quicker. I'm not going to go into the differences in this video because that, that's not what this is about. So go ahead and just look it up on your own if you want to know. Look up judicial and non-judicial states and you can get lists of which states are which so you can know. Now, that doesn't mean you don't invest in a judicial foreclosure state. It's just one of the things you're going to be taking into account when you're looking at the property. One thing I do like about Ground Floor before we drop into looking at the properties is something called automatic investing. And that is where you're not choosing the properties, but they're randomly assigning you, where you're investing into just a random property. You would, you would set a security score of what's okay for you. Now, why I kind of like that is that there's no magic wand or no way to actually know on a property if you've hit a winner. You just don't know. You don't see these properties. You don't know the people that are doing the work. It can look all great on paper and boom, someone's brother dies and they leave town and the property is just vacated, right? I mean, you just don't really know. So I can show you some ways I would look at properties to invest in, but you know, wild card, the best way to do it is to spread your risk amongst a bunch of different properties. So if you were to invest to say $5,000, I wouldn't put $5,000 into one property. I would take that and break that up into at least five properties, a thousand each, or maybe even 10 properties. 500 each or something like that. But if you don't want to do that, if you just want to do automatic investing, you can set that and then the, then the platform then just does the investments for you. Now, what kind of properties are people able to borrow against for you guys to invest in in this hard money? It's one to four unit properties in 32 different states, 
new construction in all states. The loan sizes are from $75,000 to $750,000. The loan terms is usually 12 to 18 months and they loan up to 70% the after repair value. They don't finance modular homes or mobile homes. They do, don't do properties over three and a half acres and they don't do any commercial properties. So these are just single family residential properties on less than three and a half acres. So the way that um, ground floor makes their money is that they charge the borrowers anywhere from two to four and a half points. Um, that's paid at closing. Also, the interest on these loans is all paid at closing. I, I think I'm, I haven't seen one yet that wasn't deferred payment. So it's lump sum at the end when the borrower fixes up the property and sells it, then it's paid back and you and the investor gets paid back with the interest. Now, the interest payments don't go in any way to ground floor. All of the interest gets paid to the lenders, us. Ground floor just makes their money on the points that up front. They don't make their money on the interest. That's for us. And the rates for the borrowers are anywhere from 55 to 18% interest, which then gets passed on to us. Then obviously the interest difference is going to be the risk on the loan. And some of the loans, the borrowers have some skin in the game. They might have bought the property and they have, maybe they have money into it or equity into it, it looks like. There are a few of them that are just doing purchases on that. Now, I haven't looked in the borrower side. I haven't downloaded that as if I was to borrow money to do a flip. But actually, as a broker in my area, I'm actually kind of interested in that side of it. I do know some wholesalers in town, and I'm actually kind of thinking I could probably put this together pretty easy. Um, the loan qualifications are like super easy. They don't really care about it. You have, they want their borrowers to have a minimum credit score. Um, but they're not looking at your income or credit report or anything like that if you're a borrower they're looking at the deal they're looking at the property and the numbers and seeing if it works from that standpoint so i think it'd be pretty interesting to be able to put this together just as an investor to grab one of these loans and put it in one of these um just a wholesaler property and there's some coordination there on timing i don't know how if they're accurate on their funding times they say they can fund properties just in a few weeks i don't know i just think i think that's interesting i'm going to explore that more um as i go along on this channel i'll look more into that also now, this right here is their webpage. It's groundfloor.us. Um, there's some interesting information on their webpage. It's actually worth going through and reading as you go through. I think one of the best things that you can do is going down here to the bottom of the page, like all of these sites, uh, they all seem to use the same frequently asked questions. But I would go down here and look at their fact and their blog. In fact, um, there's really helpful information here if you want to check out more of how it operates. I'll, I, it answered all of my questions. I think it answered all of yours too. Now, here is the platform with the available investments. The notes are just, um, it, you can, that's something new that you can lend money to ground floor, which is the money they use to fund the properties. The interest rate's going to be much lower. It's a lot more stable. We're just going to be looking at the property investments here. So you can see there's a grading here, C, 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 C. You can't sort filter by much more than just what I have right here. So when I do my filtering on this, I don't filter by interest rate. I think that is a little bit irrelevant. I um, filter by valuation right here. I want to see the ones that have the lowest um, after repair value. I like that as a lender. If I'm going to be lending on a property, I don't want to see someone so upside down that we can't sell it if they get into trouble. So when I sort by these, the lowest ARVs, um, you can see they're all going to be a low grade, B, a safer grade of a B. Looking across, it has the interest rate here at 9%. The remaining term on loan, loan 10.5 months. So that means, you guys, if I put money into it and there's 10 months left, I'm not going to make 9%. That 9% is the APR over a year. So since there's only 10 months remaining, I would be that wouldn't be a full 9%. So you need to understand that when you do the math. That is over 12 months. So um, that's the remaining term. So just know that. But... What you can do is, is as soon as your money drops out of this at 10 and a half months, you just roll it over into another one at a similar interest rate and you just keep it going. Then by the end of the year, you are getting that full interest rate. You're just going to have to drop it into more than one property if the loan term is less than 12 months. Now, 35% is the after repair value. So the debt to the after repair value, the payment right here, you can see is deferred. They're almost always deferred. Right now, this has 400 investors on this property. And then the loan amount is for $211,400 is what this borrower is asking for. And the remaining amount they're trying to fund is $175,000. And there's 28 days to do that. And it's a minimum of a $10 investment. Opening this one up, this is the project summary. Up on the top, the interest rate, again, 9%, 15 months. But remember, the loan, that's the, that was the projected term. We're at 10 and a half months, though, remember, on the front page. So they're still looking for money. It could be multiple rounds of funding. That's the other thing. It's always, not always one. It could be, um, they're called limited resource obligations, LROs. And so a full recourse 
it mean, means if someone borrows money, it's a full recourse loan. That means you can go after all their assets if they don't pay it back. A non-recourse loan, basic, what that means is that you loan someone money. If they don't pay it back, the only thing you can go after is whatever the collateral was that they loaned on. So the property itself. A limited recourse loan means that the borrower put up something that will be in the contract. And that's what they have, the skin in the game. Um, that's what the limited resources against is whatever they put in the contract that the borrower was putting up as some sort of collateral in the deal. And I can't see those on this platform here. So that's just something that that's how it works. So this is a purchase loan. First lien, of course, total loan amount, $211,000 balloon payment due at maturity. So this is the financial overview. Now this property looks like they're saying it has about 82,000 in final equity when it's done. The owner has $306,000 in either well, equity, skin in the game. And then here's the loan amount that in first lien, you can see it's in first lien sitting above it. Over on the right is the grade factors. So the loan to ARV score is a seven. You can see these right here, quality, invest, quality evaluation report. So that's gonna be because it's got a full appraisal. Skin in the game is a 10 because the borrower in this case has $306,000 in equity, it looks like. Location is a four. That's a hard one to judge when you're just looking on the internet. The borrower experience is a three out of five. So that means this guy is probably pretty new at this. The borrower commitment is a one. And that would mean if it's a zero, he's a part-time flipper. And this is a one, so he's doing this full time. So over here, they're saying the valuation that when it's completed, it's going to be worth $600,000. Then down here, they have a little map of where it's located. Then a property photo that just land. Um, down here, there's just some closing conditions. And then there's down here the developer fees, what ground floor um, information on what they're charging. The SEC filing information. This is a series of loans it, go, it looks like against this property and then down here the borrower summary little financial data value of this person's properties just total debt completed projects some revenue from those projects it looks like um he's funded one loan completed projects two a year so i think one loan on this pro on this platform and he hasn't paid it back yet because it's the current one we're looking at now one of the ways that i would be looking at these properties if i was looking to invest right now is I would look at properties that are at least around the median price in that area and that's really easy to do to figure that out so look at this one right here so this one is in Jacksonville Florida it's a 10% loan there's nine months left um, the 63% loan to ARV I like that a little bit there that's nice um, they're still trying to raise seven thousand dollars in the next 22 days or 763 investors so looking down here, it looks like his skin in the game is $16,000. Ground floor, we're loaning here in that $78,000 range. There's going to be a secondary lien on here. This is also from ground floor for $87,70. So not a lot of room here on the equity. But what I like about this project is the after repair value down here is $125,000. So those properties are easy to sell. And here's why. This is in Jackson, what I say, Jacksonville, Florida. So if you just go to realtor.com or if you just type into Google, just type in median home price in city. So median home price in Jacksonville, Florida, click on realtor.com. It's going to bring you here right down here. The median sold home price in Jacksonville is $292,000. So this property that they're fixing up, this thing is going to sell instantly. Anything in that price range that far below median value. If something happens in the seller or we have to take it back to sell it or you know, ground floor and they have to go through that process. So I like this investment. One reason, the reason I like it is because the median price is so low. Um, and the seller, the, the borrower has a little bit of skin in the game. Um, there's, it's kind of tied on the equity there, $21,000 off $125,000 purchase price. So that's about only maybe about 15%. Um, but if this has, the property has to come back, it can be sold really quick. The one thing against this property, I will say, is that Florida is a um, judicial foreclosure state. So I would have to weigh that in pretty heavily. I wouldn't put all my money into this one. But if I was to put some in, I might drop a little bit in this and then go look for something to offset that. Now look at this one right here. This one's in Daytona Beach, Florida. Seems kind of okay. Um, the price, only $340,000. That's what he's expecting to sell this for. And he has a full appraisal coming in at $340,000. Total project cost $250,000. So there's this nice spread here, $89,000 in equity. I like that. But I would question this one, maybe, maybe not, because $340,000 on kind of a, I don't know, that kind of a 
goofy looking little property. When I go to um, realtor.com, I'm looking at 265,000 is the median sold price. I don't know, 200, it's above the median price. I would wanna maybe pop in to look at some comps. Um, it's pretty easy, just pull this up on realtor.com, look at some of the comps and just see if you would agree with that valuation and then see if it would be worth selling that against those properties. Now, here's an interesting one. This one's in Levon, Texas. 10%, 15 months, um, loan to value, pretty low, 43% loan to value. Now, I think this is a different one. This is skinned in the game. He brought a lot of equity and he's just doing a refinance. There's nothing he's doing on this pro. I don't know if it's a he, um, but he's not doing any work on this property. It says it down below. It's just, I think he's just grabbing some equity at a high interest rate for some reason, probably poor credit. I don't know. I'm just guessing on that, um, but you're participating in that. So that's something different too. I've seen some projects in here like our construction projects from you know, foundation on up. And then I see some of these that are sort of um, just refinance projects. But you know, you guys, that's real estate. You're investing. It really doesn't matter what they're doing with the properties because you're just kind of looking at the numbers and the term. That's why I would spread it out against a lot of different properties also because things change. Like I said earlier, the risk profile in each property actually can change over a little bit of time. Real estate's going to be pretty flat in the next couple of years. That's why I like ground floor over a REIT. I think REITs, you know, they get pretty big and they're looking for projects. It gets pretty boring after a while. If you have $20 billion you're trying to manage, the kind of projects you go after, they're not going to be as profitable than if you just have a couple million dollars. You can go after different projects. It's a, it's a lot more profitable the smaller the dollar amount. So if you're thinking of putting your money into a REIT, I'm not going to say don't go for a REIT. But I think over the next couple of years, real estate across the nation is going to be pretty flat. We're not going to see those big increases. At best, it's going to be flat if not going negative. I know um, Fundrise, look at their numbers over the last year, I think, and it's not so happy. Um, and I don't think that's going to be getting them much better for the large scale REITs. So this is a way that you can do something to participate in real estate on that really small scale, kind of rolling the dice with some investors, look at their profile, look at their history. So some of these guys haven't done anything before. So maybe someone, you want to look at someone that's done a project or two before, um, maybe, or do they own a few other buildings? And you can see that in the financials that we do get a little bit about those owners. I haven't personally put my money into ground floor yet. I do like the opportunity. I'm considering it. I also like the higher action on some of the crypto stuff projects that are coming out with real estate. I'm going to be talking about those. There's some riskier projects that have some really high returns coming up and I'm kind of, I'm kind of saving my bank up for some of those riskier projects. One thing you guys should be paying attention to is I would be looking at Metropoli or Metropoli. I'm not sure how they're calling that. That one, they have a token that's just been launched on, on, on some exchanges called, uh, this just Metro. Um, I like that project coming up. I think you have a probably a higher risk, but a higher chance for returns. So uh, ground floor, I think is a super great opportunity. If you're looking for a nice, steady investment, 10% back, 10% is their average over the last number of years. And a lot of these projects have a really low security score. So a good security score and still getting a 10% return. That's a really good return on your money right now, you guys. That's a really good return on your money in real estate right now.